Hi, and welcome to In the Front Row, all things news, reviews, and interviews. My name's Jamie Lee, and joining me today, I have the lovely Chloe Adona, who plays number nine, one of the Hawkins Labs children in Stranger Things 4. Welcome, Chloe. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thank you for having me here. No dramas. I feel like everybody's talking about Stranger Things at the moment. It's definitely the hype. Uh, we will get into that. But first, I just wanted to ask you about uh, what got you into acting? What inspired you to take this career path, basically? Well, from a young age, I've always been into the acting industry. And around like three, I started singing. And then when I was six years old, I got into dancing. And around 10 years old, I got into acting. And my dance teacher started an agency and that opened the doors of the acting world for me. Awesome. So was there an actress or a movie that really inspired you to take this path? Yes, I watched Dove Cameron on Liv and Maddie. And I would watch Liv and Maddie and I would think less about the actual plot and what was going on. But about how they made Dove Cameron play two different roles in the same scene. And I was so into the, the filming parts of it and how the actresses and actors and how Dove Cameron had these two different characters and how she played both of them. And they were really different. And I just found so much inspiration from Dove Cameron at the time. And so she's been my idol for the longest time. Oh, that's lovely. And so let's jump into Stranger Things now. So had you have watched Stranger Things before you actually applied for your audition? Uh, yeah, with my dad around 2016, 2017, um, I watched season one, season two, and season three with him. And it was really scary, so I had to watch it with him. But of course, um, yeah. I rewatched it with all of my friends, uh, like around 2020. And then just recently I booked it and then I was like, okay, gotta go. we got to watch it for the third time. So, yeah, I mean, it would have been terrifying because at that time, I think it was 2016, as you said, you would have been quite young, like maybe seven or something like that. And yeah, yeah. I still get scared watching it now and I'm in my thirties. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely scary, <laughs> especially the last season. That was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. The Duffer brothers did an amazing job. Definitely. So with your audition, did you know that you were playing the role of number nine? Like what was your actual audition? Was it a scene from the show or was it something completely different? Well, my audition was actually the scene with number 10 and Dr. Brenner in the first eight minutes of episode one, season four. And wow. um, yeah, and so I had, it was pretty much the same lines. Um, my reader, which was my mom, she read Dr. Brenner's lines and I kind of picked up on the fact that it was for Stranger Things. It didn't say it in the audition, but I had to pull my hair back into a really low ponytail, tie it, slick back so that they would see me and have an idea of what I would look like with a shaved head. Yeah, well, that was going to be my next question. Did you actually have to shave your head for the audition or did you do that after you got booked? Well, when I was told I got booked for the role, I was also told that I had to shave my head for it. Yeah. And how did you feel about that? Were you a little bit nervous or were you like, yes, I've got the role. I will do anything. <laughs> I mean, booking the role was, was really, really big for me. And for sure. I had it on my vision board for 2022, like two weeks, three weeks before I actually booked it. And so putting it on my vision board and then a couple of weeks later booking it, it was so like surreal for me. And absolutely, it was really a mix of emotions because I got told like the best news of my life. And then I was being told that I'm gonna do something that I've never really wanted to do before, shave my head. And so it was like, it was like all of these things being told of me. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, a lot of emotions going through your body. Yeah, 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 for sure. But overall it was like, it was exciting, but I was also nervous. And I guess those two emotions like kind of are the same feeling. Yeah, obviously you're really excited. Did you have to keep it a secret that you were in Stranger Things or could you tell everybody? Just my immediate family knew, my mom, my dad, my sister, and we couldn't tell anyone else for about a year and a half. That um, must have been so hard. Yeah, I really wanted to tell all my friends like, hey guys, I'm on, my, I'm on our favorite TV show. Isn't that crazy? And then like I would picture the reactions in my head, but I guess I just had to be patient and know that they were going to find out at the right time. Yeah. yeah. And so talk to me about the makeup. I've seen some pictures on your Instagram of uh, the makeup artist putting the blood on your eyes and things like that. Can you talk us through that a little bit? 
Yeah, so in the morning, I would get to my trailer and I would change into costume. And then one of the PAs would knock on our door and say, head to the makeup trailer. And so we'd go over there and sometimes we would see um, some of the other cast, like Matthew Modine, um, just sitting in the makeup trailer getting ready for the day. And so I would sit there and they would touch up my ears because um, I have earring holes and we don't have ear piercings in the lab. Yeah, of course. So fill it in and then they would fill or cover up any like acne or like scabs on our faces and then on the days that we were shooting the massacre they would come at us with this fake blood that they would like drip right underneath our eyes and um sometimes out of our nose uh but there was a lot of blood in the mix because <laughs> most of the days we were shooting the massacre and yeah. um and then after the makeup trailer we would go not straight to set, but to our classrooms to do school. And uh, cause we're all still kids and we had to get in like certain hours of school time while of also course, working. Yeah. And so we would sit in the classroom in my classroom, I mean like me and like three other kids that were also uh, playing the role of some numbers. And we would just all sit there doing school for the day at like 10 AM, blood dripping down our eyes. In the hospital and full, full makeup. <laughs> and the and full costume <laughs> with shade wow. heads. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> it's like to you, that's probably so normal. But for someone like me who's not in the industry and doesn't have any experience with what goes on, I find that so funny that, you know, you're sitting in there learning, just doing normal things like schoolwork mm -hmm. with, you know, face full of blood. That's so funny. I mean, like back at home, um, I'm sure like all my friends that I had to leave in person were typing on computers away, just like us <laughs> yeah. uh, like in regular school. But we were like in this huge building in one of the smaller rooms with a teacher, three other kids, and we all had shade heads, blood dripping down our faces, <laughs> hospital gowns. And so that was our norm for a while. That's so funny. So, so interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. So talk to me about Jamie and Millie. Obviously, you got to spend a lot of time working with them because they were in the lab with you. What was that like? They were so like amazing to watch in person because I've seen both of their work before I actually met them. And just their presence is really like breathtaking like because I've always been a fan of Millie like in Stranger Things and to see her become 11 in person and watch them perform in person it was so like inspiring for me like I would pick up on the things that they did they would switch they would snap into character and be like okay snap I okay. need to do that as well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it oh, was really so really cool, cool. And how far in advance did you know that Jamie was Henry slash one slash Beckner? What did you guys call him? Well, in the scripts that we got for the day, um, his character name was actually Orderly. And we would all refer to his character as Orderly because they didn't right. put Henry, they didn't put Beckner, and they didn't put number one, of course. Yeah. Um, but I guess it went around set that he was playing number one. We just had no clue what Vecna was or Henry, who Henry was. And so we had an idea that he was number one, but like there was no confirmation. And so we kind of had our theories watching season four. And then when he turned around and slammed that guard into the wall, we we're like, okay, we saw it coming, but we didn't know that was how it's going to be. Like the Duffer brothers revealed that he was number one in the best way possible. Absolutely. I was mind blown when I found out that he was number one. I had no idea because the whole time, you know, I had, was he trying to help a living? You know, did he really want to get her out of the lab? And did he really care about you girls that were, uh, you know, in there with him? But no, no, he just yeah. total villain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on set too, um, he was really, really nice. And the scenes that he filmed, he was his character was nice, like helping Levin, talking to her at, at one of the uh at one of the toys um that was there. And so we all thought he was like a good character. But um then we filmed a scene of him like attacking Eleven and we were like, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, like that completely twisted our theories. Like, okay rewrite a new plan let's see who is this guy yeah yeah for sure that would have been so strange and so in that rainbow room did you get to pick what activities that you wanted to choose like did you know how to play chess and you thought i'll pick that or i'll do the spinning tops did you get a choice or were the directors or the duffer brothers did they assign that for you yeah so the the duffer brothers actually assigned that for us um but in between takes we would like wander around we'd hang out in the rainbow room while they were getting like the camera set up um there's a bunch of toys there that like the tops and then 
the maze with the magnet balls like that was really quiet cool. I, I still don't understand how they did that um <laughs> but uh the Duffer brothers assigned me and Bentley who plays number 15 to chess and we didn't know how to play and so they told us when you when we call action you're gonna pick up this piece Chloe Bentley you're gonna pick up this piece and then you're gonna place it right here and you're gonna place it right here they're like okay got no clue what that's doing but or who's winning but okay yeah, so they basically <laughs> taught you how to play chess. You move this, you move that. Yeah, I mean, we kind of got an idea, like queens, kings, knights, pawns, all of that. We got a sense of how it works. Yeah, oh, awesome. That's so fun. And so talk to me about the scenes again with Millie and Jamie. Was Millie actually doing her stunts there or was they stunt doubles? What was all that like and what was that like to watch? Yeah, so I got to watch um, Millie floating in the air floating in the air uh, through harnesses and wires. Um, but I was laying on the ground and, or no, no, no. When I walked in that morning, when I walked into set, I saw all of these wires coming through the ceiling, which was removed. And there was, they were all coming like to the middle. And so Millie stood in the middle and I was watching all this happen. And they took the wires, they strapped it to her harness, which was under her gown. And then they called action and she floated she flew <laughs> yep yeah she flew and <laughs> I was just laying there like all dead watching it happen I was like wow and so, yeah you couldn't make that face wow because you had to play dead so it was just like <laughs> yeah I couldn't, I couldn't move my stomach either oh, so wow. I kind of had to like hold my breath and if I wanted to breathe I would like breathe through my chest like yeah. less movement that's right. Yeah. That's so cool that she actually did those stunts in there and that it wasn't a double doing that. Mm, it was really amazing to watch. There was a part when she was strapped onto something and she was laying on the ground. Uh -huh. I don't remember this from watching season four, but I remember filming this. Uh, they had wires on her and they said action and she was getting dragged across the ground using wires. And so, and it was actually Millie and I was just like, wow. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, it's so interesting. Is that something that you would be interested in doing in your career? Is that something that you'd want to participate in, you know, stunt work and things like that? Yeah, well, I've always wanted to get into like martial arts and just know the basics of how to defend myself. Mm -hmm. And um, to know that there is a world with that and also with what I love acting called stunt, stunts. Um, like, it's like a perfect mix. And yeah. so that really like watching Millie do her own stunts I was like okay that's that's pretty cool and so fortunately for me I got booked with a role that did include stunts and so I got to experience a little bit uh what it's like in the stunt double world uh -huh. and I got stunt training and that's all for my character Mandy in Renfield and yeah so, so that one comes out 2023 right are you able to tell us a little bit about what that movie's about yeah, a little bit. So it's coming out April 2023, of course. Um, it's a horror, a comedy. A, it's a, yeah, it's a horror and a comedy all in one. Uh, it's a lot about vampires. Um, it's like a modern day Dracula, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's starring Nicolas Cage, Aquafina, Nicholas Holt, Ben Schwartz, and Shore. And they're all amazing actors. So I think Absolutely. Yeah, that's so awesome that you got to work with those guys as well. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty fun. Well, I can't wait to see you in that. I love anything vampire, so I'm super stoked for that one. Ooh, I think you're going to love it. <laughs> I think I'll definitely love it. <laughs> All right, before I let you go, I just want to play a quick little game with you. So what's your favorite show that you're watching at the moment? Vampire Diaries. Favorite food? Skinny Pop. Favorite animal? Polar bears. And lastly, what's your favorite saying? Little girls with dreams become women women with vision. Oh, that's so beautiful. Very inspiring. Yeah. I was told that by my aunt when I was about seven. And so it's always stuck with me. Yeah, it's a really nice thing to stick with too. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I won't keep you much longer. I really appreciate you being on this show. And I've got to let you go because you haven't actually quite finished watching Stranger Things yet. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I'm saving that last hour and 30 minutes of the last last episode because I've heard it so good and so like I'm trying to wait for a night where I have like 
the whole experience with me. Absolutely. <laughs> so I didn't watch it. And I wish I hadn't dragged mine out because now I feel like I've got to wait, what, two years? I think it comes out 2024, season five. So I'm like, it's such a long wait. Yeah. <laughs> but it's such a good show and it's definitely going to be worth the wait, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on this show. I really appreciate you talking to me today. Thank you so much for having me here. No worries. Bye. Bye.